you and Flavor, you know, when when you said the one two punch of a uh, of uh, James Brown, Bobby Bird, the, the one two punch of. Elvis was a hero to most, oh, yeah, yeah. but he never meant shit to me. Right. Straight up racist to sucker, simple and plain, and then flavor with the motherfuck him and John Wayne. That was yeah. such a revolutionary moment. Well, he had to voice all my punchlines that mm. I wrote, and I'd be like, damn, man, you got the hell of a fucking punchline I wrote. You're like, fuck it, you got it. No, but it, it, <laughs> I think that radicalized me. It radicalized people like Ice Cube. It radicalized people like Tupac. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, uh, Adisa uh, Benjoko, founder of Hip Hop Chess That's Federation. Man. That's right. Friend of Tupac. Yes. Tells a story about Tupac being at a Public Enemy show uh, when he, uh, right after he had been beaten up by the police. Yeah. When Tupacalypse Now came out, and you got wind of it, and you stopped the show uh -huh. in Oakland to dedicate a song to Tupac. Yeah. And this brought Tupac to tears. Yeah. Um. Then Tupac wrote you a letter that you from jail that you shared on your social media. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk to me about what you were going through on that stage, and then talk to me about the feelings behind that letter and your correspondence with Tupac. Well, that was easy because Tupac mm -hmm. was like a little brother with us. Mm -hmm. He, I mean, he was he was a dude carrying bags for Digital Underground, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also Shock G would let him get a little rhyme time if they if they expanded the show out. Mm -hmm. Remember, Public Enemy actually our responsibility was to bring other cats on the show. So on that tour, 1990, it was us and Heavy D bringing everybody around. Public Enemy is the first group along with Stetson Sonic that went to all different parts of this country and saw hip-hop in other regions. Before that, hip-hop just came up out of New York across the United States. Mm -hmm. But then in 1988, with the Bring the Noise tour was Public Enemy, Stetson Sonic, EPMD, and in every market we went to, we would go in the, in the Bay, we'd bring Hammer on our stage, NWA in the South, mix a lot in Seattle. We was the first to actually go into regions and put them on the show. You would shout them out on records too. Shout them out on records, and mm -hmm. I did all the liner notes, of course. It was important because I went to these areas. Not just in the liner notes, though, but in those verses. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah, mix a lot. Yeah, yeah. MC Light, she could Light. around yeah, fighting all that. people like that. It's important because it shows the, the unofficial but official unionizing that we're all in this thing together. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, so Pac was like, funny thing about it, right? Right, T? Pac and Tretch are Close. both carrying bags for, mm -hmm. and respectively, for Latifah Flavor and unit. Digital Underground. Yeah. So I remember the first time Latifah introduced me to Tretch, and we was in, like, Louisiana, like, mm -hmm. the backwoods, Baton, not even Baton Rouge, um, where the Raging Cajuns are from, Lafayette. Mm -hmm. And um, Latifah said, Meet my uh, one of my proteges, treacherous. <laughs> All right, treacherous. Here we go. Right. Like, well, you know, I had you know I had OG status. Like right. I was taught. You know, I I was known for the guy who was also older. Because although Dougie Fresh taught me, mm -hmm. I was older than Doug, so I showed them logos. Like I did the logo on the Get Fresh Crew, the one with the raised fist. Okay. And yeah. So I showed Doug other. Wow, I didn't know you did that logo. Yeah, yeah. So uh, rising to the top and mm -hmm. all that. So so Latifah introduced me to Tretch. I'm looking at him. All right, you're going to be ready. <laughs> go, Did he have the padlock, the chain with the padlock? Not on yet. On the edges of it. Okay. He, remember he had I, the, I can see Tretch carrying bags with yeah. a jail suit on and a padlock <laughs> chain. Yeah, because we helped break Latifah in too. Right. So both of these dudes, I'm looking at these young dudes, 19 years old, I'm looking at them. We go to a city and they rolling out together. I said, dudes, don't fuck up. We ain't gonna come to save your ass. Don't fuck up. I was like Uncle Chuck. Right. That's where the Uncle Chuck came from. I was always Uncle Chuck. Right. And I was like, dude, I'm watching both of y'all. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. One day, Pac could get that verse. He's on there doing like whatever, doing his thing. Right. Gets that verse. Later on, he did the same song uh, mm -hmm. a little bit later. Right. You know, he finally got, got around. Got his, when I'm around with the underground. That, that was his Where's coming out party. Was? I sent him a little note. Yeah. I said, oh, you big man now. Okay. And then Tretch had, you know, the whole right. Naughty by Nature the next year. But it was a wonderful joy seeing them young men mm -hmm. enjoying their... They're coming out, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's just like these guys are going to be stars, and they were buddies like that. So this is why when what happened to Pac, it really seriously affected Trey. That's right. Man, these dudes were like way. young rookies, man. So yeah. they were rookies, and the next year they were they were kind of like stars. stars. Yeah, you know. So yeah. that was a joy because I, I come from the sports world, but I never was good in sports. But I always enjoyed like when you see somebody come in and get coached, and then that person's the mm -hmm. baller. You know, the coaching is very important. Not that we teaching them You're how missing to rap. a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the stage, man. You treat the stage like, like how, that. how Houdini did for you. 
It was a beautiful mm-hmm. time, man. It was a beautiful time. And whenever somebody says something about Pac, I think of Tretch. Mm-hmm. Whenever I That's think right. about Tretch, I think about Pac. As it should be. As it should be. It's, As a, it be- should it's be. a beautiful moment yeah. for me. So seeing that Pac had that little issue or whatever with the police, I'm, like, I'm on stage. So I'm like saying, what the fuck? That's Pac? Get your ass up here, bro. It's like, it like one of those things. And we shut down the show. Said Kai was a Kaiser. And um, this is a, this is our little dude, man. This is our little brother, man. And it was a case one time, Oklahoma City. Mm-hmm. Dude busted in, the, in, the, in our dressing room and stole our shit. I mean, mm-hmm. I stole eight you know, Uzis and whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, show shit. Mm-hmm. They found and closed the building, right? And they found the dude. But the dude kind of took him and hit him in that building in Oklahoma City and was lying. Pac was back there. Pac had this dude yoked up and was <laughs> like, listen, <laughs> Pac, it's not that serious. Had the dude yoked up. I'll kill you. I was like, yo, you would have <laughs> killed him, man. Really. I'm right. like, calm down. But, you know, you looked at this dude. It's like, this dude is fine. It's like, and I'm the, I'm the Uncle Chuck. Like, listen, man. It's, I mean, Public Enemy it's was right. serious about Public Enemy, though. Serious? Yes, he was serious yeah, about man. it. So, but I'm glad that Pac didn't kill this dude because we <laughs> never would have heard about him. But right. yeah. that's that was the type of mentorship we were given while being on stage and it was advantageous that I'm on stage I'm getting down but before we was actually doing tours the, the headliner never checked out the opening group mm-hmm. when we were at the headline position for spe- especially five years in a row I always made it my business to go to the first group and encourage them and that was a beautiful period Stuck in it, call me young, go get it.